<laughs> Hold on. Okay, we're live. We've got people watching. All right, we got what? stuff coming through. What is up, you guys? Okay. Hey, welcome to another week at the Andersons back deck. That's right, y'all. Love being here with you guys. We're going to try and do these, what, weekly? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe not weekly. Just try and see how it goes. But um, we're just, I don't know. We figured, hey, we'll try this out. We tried it out last time, and it was really fun. Uh, so right now, we are enjoying our nice, beautiful sunset right here of the Chesapeake Bay. I've got my LaCroix. Y'all got your questions. So you guys keep them coming. And let's Hey, me and through. Lily are watching. Who dat? Who dat? Hello from... What's up, Cliff Nagel? What's up, you guys? All right, cryptid memes. What good lures to use in South Carolina? So right now in South Carolina, it's actually a lot of like a live bait bite down there because the water temperature is really hot. So I would recommend actually using, if you can get yourself some finger mullet, that's what's kind of the best finger mullet, live shrimp. But for lures, um, Z-Man, uh, put some pro cure on it. You know, use mm -hmm. soft plastics. That's what I would use right now. Yeah. Okay, who else? Um, outdoors Mania Creations. What lures for flounder and redfish? Um, for flounder and redfish. Y'all can actually, if you guys are doing like wreck fishing or a little bit deeper, you guys can be using some bucktails. Like there's specific flounder bucktails, which I actually love using them for doing wreck fishing for flounder. Um, but you guys can definitely just use, Jeff and I always love our Z-Man soft plastics. Um, those will do the trick every time. But if you guys are looking for live bait, you can live bait it up. Those yep. will definitely get you on some fish too. Pop and cork too. North Florida bass and what are some good multi-species lures for inshore? All right. So you guys, for the inshore lures and a lot of these questions, soft plastics, you cannot go wrong. Go with a quarter ounce jig head um, and either use like, so Chris and I, we typically use like two setups. One with a popping cork. And you can put anything on that. You can put a Berkeley Gulp shrimp. You can put a Z-Man, soft plastic. And uh, the other one is just going to go straight to a jig head. So soft plastics, I would recommend either Berkeley Gulp, shrimp, or swimming mullet, or Z-Man. Uh-huh. Oh, hey, Carolina. And Lily Beatson. What's up, girl? So Lily Beatson. You guys, um, we fish a lot with Kobe a Killer. I know you guys know him. Um, Aaron Beatson out in the Outer Banks. And him... Jeff and I and his daughter went out fishing yesterday, caught some cobia, so we're going to be putting out a video. Jeff, when are you editing this video? I don't know. It's and the next day or two. Yep. So hang tight. She's 13 and freaking awesome and getting on some fish. That's Super right. proud of her. Philip Holder, shout out from Nelson and New Bern. Absolutely, you can get a shout out. Hopefully, y'all are catching those big reds, those adult red fish out there because I know that they're out there right now. Um, music master, what's the best way to catch game fish from the pier? I'm in Texas. Well, lucky for you, because Texas is has amazing have fishing right the now. The biggest trout, by the way. Yeah. You should I think is it um Speckled Truth, which is like a trout Instagram yeah. name. Y'all should check them out. They right. are catching a, catching them up in Texas. So the best way to catch game fish from the pier in Texas is Mm, I don't know. You can use, y'all have live shrimp down there that you can buy at tackle shops, I would assume. So you can use that, just live shrimp, put that on a, um, like a fish finder rig. Um, you can put live shrimp on a uh, jig head and just cast it off of the pier and just work that live shrimp or just a bottom rig. That's probably the easiest way. Buy yourself a bottom rig mm -hmm. and get yourself some live shrimp and you will catch flounder, trout, and puppy drum. Can I get a shout out for Nelson and New Bern, North Carolina? What is up? Mm -hmm. Love New Bern, North Carolina. All right. We actually here just we fished go. there not too long ago. That's right. Just got connected to chat. Two questions. How to get wife into fish? Clarence McNeil. Great how to, question. How to get her into fishing? Uh, yeah. Start with a bottle of wine on the boat. I'm just kidding. That's what all my girlfriends say. Like, I don't like fishing, but if you bring some wine, I'll come. Hey, start off with blood worms on a bottom rig, and y'all catch croaker, trout, everything. So um, that's that's what I would do to get the wife into fishing. Also, just watch our videos. Show her oh, that, you know. And maybe and, bait it up for her for a few few times to fish off. That's right. And then she'll get the hang of it. Or yep. just come out fishing with us. Yep. Uh, Philip Polar going to for some bulls. Good luck. Let us know how you do. Daniel Flores, have you fished Port Mansfield area? No, we have not. And we want to. Where is that? 
I think that's in Texas. Is that in Texas? I believe so. We have God not been Texas. to, I've been to Texas on vacation, but we have not fished there yet. So that's actually, where uh, we, what? is it Corpus Christi? Yeah. Uh, Winenmo, brand new to saltwater fishing, seeing people referencing bleeding the fish before you fillet it. Yes. What is Brevin's thing and finally how? Okay, bleeding the fish. You don't have to bleed your fish, but if the, I don't know if, okay, so if you want to bleed your fish, all you do is you cut under its gill and there's probably some other like videos or articles out there on YouTube for how to bleed your fish, fish but uh, that is a good question. Maybe it, I think it spoil. spoils your fish, right? If you leave the... No. So you want to bleed your fish this in This is why instances. I have Jeff. He answers all my questions that I don't know. <laughs> right. So you would want to cut your fish like under... So if you got like the gills on both sides, it's got a main artery in the gill and you got to cut that and that will bleed the fish out. So that's how you do that. Um, bu -bu -bu -bum. Where else? I missed my spot here. Um, okay, Clarence McNeil will trout and reds near Virginia Beach in September. Yes, they will be. They will absolutely be here. Can I arm wrestle you? Who Probably are you trying to arm wrestle? Um, we work out, so. Okay, in Tampa, gonna be, there's red tide. There is, but at ICAST, everybody was talking about how hot the snook bite is. I'm not in Tampa right now, but I can tell you that Tampa right now is loaded with snook. With they were saying like under slice, under slot size snook. So anywhere from like 15, 20, 25 inches in Tampa, I would look for like the port wall, like any area that's like a wall, a retaining wall, and around the marinas. They've been catching them. Are you coming to North Florida anytime? Yes. We actually were just there like three weeks ago. We will be coming back shortly. Yeah. Probably October. How do you recommend to fish oyster beds? I would recommend bouncing. Okay, there's three things for fishing oyster beds. One is you can fish mirror lure or something that suspends over the oyster beds. Christy and I, we popping really like to cork fish popping cork. really good to you. I would recommend popping cork all day long just because it suspends above. It's not going to get hung up. You'll get way less frustrated. So try that first. Yes. Uh, How to rig kingfish. Hold on. Let's get to Philip. Thoughts okay. on the blabbermouth. We love the blabbermouth popping corks. And so Philip Holder asked the question, what are your thoughts on the blabbermouth? And for those of y'all who don't know, the blabbermouth is a larger popping cork. That's a plastic one. It's the plastic one. And if you guys watch our red fishing video on the Noose River that we did last summer, um, where we slayed the big adult redfish on the Noose River, we were using the blabbermouth. It's definitely got more, it's a louder sound. It's more vibration. It makes bigger splashes through the water. So I think it's good for the bigger game fish. Yes. Uh... Let's get what's fished. biting at CBBT. Everything is biting right there. Yep. Spades are there. Uh, Life and I would love to meet you on next and time. And do you use clams? Like yep. All day long for those, those spade fish. Uh, Clam it up. What's up, John? You better be coming over tomorrow because we got some fish for you tomorrow night. Who that? John and Ida. Oh, uh, what's up, John? What would you guys target right now in your backyard? So if we were fishing in our backyard right now, I'd be bluefish, Spanish mackerel, because they're skying. Literally, if I just stare out long enough, we could probably see them popping. There's tons of them. There's a lot of bluefish up on the jetties and stuff, which you cannot fish the jetties. Jeff and I used to fish them. There's a lot, a lot of trout and flounder. Yeah. Um. It's gonna be going off though in about October with these trout. C Junior Junior, could you explain different types of lines? Absolutely. So the different types of lines, we got a question says, can you explain the different types of lines? So just in short, you have braided line, which is, this is all very basic and very generic. Braided line is gonna give you more casting distance. Um, it's going to kind of be, uh, it's, it's also gonna give you more line capacity. Typically for saltwater fishing inshore for Christy and I, we use braided line for our main line on the spool. And then we're going to link that up with the leader line, which goes to your hook. And you're going to either use monofilament or fluorocarbon. Fluorocarbon is more expensive, but it's also a little bit more clear. Um, so depending on where you're fishing, some people in Florida, they really only like to use fluorocarbon. Monofilament, it stretches a little bit more. It's a little bit cheaper, but you can still get by with it. So really, that's kind of the quick explanation for your lines there. 
for us, we use 15 pound braid and we typically use 10 to 12, 15 pound um, fluorocarbon for our leader. Yep. Um, best, cheapest fishing rod and reel. Okay. So um, I would have to say favorite puts out some pretty cheap rods, um, but we love, love, love Falcon, which is not that much more expensive. So either one is great. Um, favorite's got two that I have always fished, the Phantom and the Defender. Um, they're awesome. And Florida Fishing um, products for your reels. Mm -hmm. They make a killer 3000 if you guys are looking to do inshore. Um, flounder fishing in Florida, same tactics, Berkeley gold. Absolutely. Same tactics, mm -hmm. same exact thing. Bounce it off of the bottom. Um, <laughs> you can use like, live shrimp and the minnows, finger mullet. Uh -huh. If you have finger mullet, um, or you can get it or net it, then right now is a really good live bait bite. That's so, right. Look who's on. Christy Perry. What's up girl? That's my best friend right there oh, that's cool. from Florida. Yes, girl, I'm going to teach you how to fish next time I come. So get yourself ready. The guitar guy, what are your favorite diving hard plastics for trout? And what are your favorite color combo? For trout, Christy and I would keep it very simple. And we're either using a 3 three eighth ounce jig head with a shrimp, Berkeley Gulp shrimp, or a Z-Man paddle tail. We do like the redfish toad um color for that um but that's pretty much it and y'all so should go diving with brooke chris and vic so they're actually our really good friends and i was talking to brooke yesterday we're planning a trip i think in october or november um she said they don't have a ton of spots that are great for like spear fishing but definitely different like diving spots so i'm excited to do that with her probably this fall for show sure. where would you fish for big red drum where would I fish for big red drum? I will show you exactly. <laughs> I would go right out there. That's the Chesapeake Bay. There's the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. I would go up the bay to the eastern shore, um, kind of like in the middle part of the bay, around Mob Jack, everything. I don't know. I'm trying to give away fishing spots here, but I don't know. I'd just go in the middle part of the bay. Or I would also go off the beach, but you got to have a boat because that's where the schools of redfish are going to be if you're in the mid-Atlantic. Do you ever fish oyster beds? Do we already answer yeah, that one? Yes. Yeah, we fish oyster beds. All day long. That's where Wherever the fish there's are beds. hanging out. So they eat whatever's up in those oyster beds. That's right. How uh, deep? I don't know. Like Depends two what feet. You're fishing for. Oyster beds are exposed. And so if there's an oyster bed, we're likely going to target that area. Um, Michael Phillips, what alternatives would you recommend? when your soft plastics are being bit off by flounder and not fishing for flounder. Um, Z-Man, use Z-Man because uh, it's a lot more durable. Uh, it Berkeley holds Gold. up a lot better. Berkeley Gold is great. It'll get you on fish all day long. So I think, yeah, once you guys get into the school of fish, switch over to Z-Man because it holds up. You can catch like 50 fish on one lure. That's exactly right. From um, Fredericksburg, have you ever used a fish hook releaser? Yes, definitely have used a fish hook releaser for a lot of our fish, especially like Spanish mackerel, and they got a lot of teeth. That's right. Um, or, guys, get, or get some pliers. We, we're starting to get a lot of questions about like specific fishing spots, like favorite wreck and things like that. And I don't know, like definitely we're here to talk about fishing knowledge and all that stuff, but I guess the last thing I'd want to do is like just kind of be like a resource just for fishing spots here on this. So We're my just favorite being wreck. respectful for other yeah. fishermen and women out there. But let's just say if there's a wreck, there's probably going to be fish on it because wreck like the, structure, check out like the EMC, it's by the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel. Yeah. I mean, there's tons of wrecks out there. You guys can just literally Google them up. All these ships that are passing through here over the years, there's probably be fish on them. When, uh, Caster Troy, when using popping cork gulps or live bait shrimp, or finger mullet. I think he's asking when you're using a popping cork, do you use live shrimp or finger mullet? The answer is you're typically going to use a live shrimp if you're actually popping the popping cork. If you're using finger mullet, cast the popping cork out and just use your popping cork as a bobber. What is the biggest fish you have ever caught? How big were our drum that one? I like 50 inches. Uh-huh. 
We caught 50 inch bull drum. That was insane. And second favorite time we've ever been out fishing. I know you guys didn't even ask this question, but was catching bluefish, which seemed ridiculous. But these bluefish were like, how big were they? Um, I mean, big. Massive. Have you eaten ribbon fish? I'm scared, says Mark W. <laughs> no, but I want to. What and I hear it? that they're actually really good. So I've never done it, but I've heard it. Uh, what that, is the best cobia tactic? Oh, if you do not have a tower or drone, fish in the daylight because you're going to need the sun right behind your back, shining on the water. Um, if there's like some waves, usually the cobia are going to be kind of up in the waves. You'll be able to see them. Um, and definitely wear some polarized glasses. I've got some in my head. These are Maui gems. That's what Jeff and I like. They're expensive, but they are top of the line and you will see more fish. I would say also to that, um, wait, you got to choose your day. Like you, you have to go out when the bay is like super slick, calm and well, just go slow. Yesterday go slow. was crazy out on the water and we still, we saw like 50 cobia and it was the choppiest I've ever been out in. That's right. So for cobia fishing without a tower, go slower than mm. if you had a tower because your field of vision is not as big as if you have a tower. So if the cobia is swimming towards you, you got to be ready. So have one person on the wheel, have one person up in the front of the boat who's sighting. And a lot of people also use a rope in the front of the boat so they can stand up on the front without being jerked around or whatever. Yep. Um, and make sure that you guys aren't going too fast because you will run over a lot of cobia if you are going Matt fast. Matt J says, or chum for cobia. Uh, that's exactly right. Um, hold on, I got some other Maybe questions. Are we doing any more wade fishing? 100% we're doing more wade fishing. Uh, we miss wade fishing, and we're really looking forward to it um, here when it, you know, when inshore fishing kind of really heats up. We will absolutely yeah. be doing more wade fishing. Um, Would you recommend the metal bottom rigs or tie something like a fish finder on the main line? Where is that? Oh, Michael Phillips. When bottom fishing with live bait. I keep thinking it says Michael Phelps. Uh, I'm just going to yeah. call you Phelps. Um, fishing on the bottom, recommend the metal bottom rigs. Um, you can. You can use them. I would, I don't know, kind of just use like a fish finder rig as opposed to the bottom rig. But you can also use it. Christy, how would you suggest the best way to get my wife to start baiting her hooks and handling fish? So... Whoa. <laughs> um, I honestly, I started with gloves cause I was really weirded out by touching blood worms and ripping them apart. So just like set her up with all, I don't know if it takes buying her cute pink gear, go do it. Buy her a cute little tackle box. I like that stuff. It's fun to feel girly when you're out there. Um, now I don't really care, but like buy her a pink tackle box, I'd get her her own pliers, um, pair of gloves. And I don't know, just. For Jeff, he was awesome when we first started. He would, like, help me bait up my own stuff, take off the fish, and then he'd be like, here, babe, like, you do it. So I think it's just really learning to enjoy being out with your spouse or your significant other, whoever you're out with, and just, like, feeling like you're a team. So that that always helps, too. Faux show. Um, okay. Okay. Wow. What? Um, best rod and reel combo. We already went over that. Plus, if you go. Florida fishing products all day long yeah and falcon falcon for your rods check them favorite out favorite way to trout fish um mm. i would say with the soft plastic and bouncing it because there's nothing like feeling the thump of a trout uh that's that if you're asking me my favorite well sorry i actually i'm gonna change that that'd be more lights on a start top water that's everybody's favorite way to fish come on now top yep. water absolutely but the best most there we go. Did the, I anything? Yeah, it did. The, Sweet. Um, you know, the kind of the most uh, consistent, which you're going to get the most action on, is just the quarter ounce jig head. Um, the best fun. saltwater rod, ask WD Richards. Okay, we said it's the Falcon. That's the best rod. Falcon clear water is amazing. Um, you all should do a collaboration with Lawson Lindsay. Absolutely. That'd be yeah, fun. We'd that like to fish cool. with him. Who said, well, you're what are so we fast. At? I can't read the rest. Um, thank you for that compliment, by the way, Jake Burns. Um, cause yeah, Lawson's got a great channel. Um, Nathan Hyatt, what's best to use on bottom right now around your area? Um, on bottom right now, if you're talking about bait, it would be live 
minnows or crabs, probably live minnows, like that you can get gudgeons from the tackle shop. We don't have shrimp <clears> up <throat> here. If we had live shrimp, then I would say that, or just cut bait. Um, um, why use fluorocarbon leaders and what length? So fluorocarbon, think of Florida because it's, right? What don't you say? What? It's more like for clear water. Yes. Yeah. You use it in clear water. So fluorocarbon, think of Florida, clear water. Um, because the clear water, the fish can see the line more. So we usually go to fluoro when we go down south. Lighter water, right? Yeah, it what also, it, it doesn't stretch as much as mono. Right. It's, it holds its elasticity, I guess you'd yeah. say. Um, and what length? Um, I, mean, I use like about two feet. Two feet. Depends. You know, nothing shorter than this right here. Because the fish can see in the water, obviously. So you're fishing braid. You know, sometimes that fish will get line shy, which means that the fish will see your braid and not really. Uh, um, um, best way to keep Berkeley uh, gulp shrimp from getting ripped apart. Answered that one, but switch to Z-Man or a different saw plastic other than Berkeley because right. Berkeley's going to get tore up from the floor up. Um, another question is how do you fish flats? Um, Fishing flats is I, just a popping cork is so easy. That's the best, mm -hmm. easiest way to do it. And just it's it's a uh, what you call a search bait, you know, so you can just cast around, just work like that fan flat. casting and cast jump out everywhere. of the boat or weight fish up on the yep. flat. That's always fun. Uh, someone asked us how long, Wells Baits, how long have y'all been YouTubing? We have been YouTubing for two years now. Mm -hmm. two years <laughs> by the way if you have any other questions just random questions about christina then feel free to ask it doesn't have to be just fishing yes what do you catch mahi on as outdoorsman's creations well we have not mahi fished yet that we, is on my bucket list for christina this I year have. so if you guys have been mahi fishing and want to invite me we, yes i will i She'd will like to go. i'm gonna come out what do you here. catch mahi on uh you catch mahi on live bait is really popular down in florida and just working the grass lines but when you get into mahi thick you can throw anything at them you can throw a wacky rig for bass fishing at them and they'll eat it and they'll eat whatever yep so sorry we can't we're not like super experts on the mahi because we haven't we don't you know we kind of do the inshore fishing mainly What's the biggest fish you've ever caught in the chesapeake bay uh that like would cobia? be a big old, big old cobia. Yep. Big old redfish. Ooh, How and a guys... big black drum. That was fun. Up on the pilings. How do you keep crabs from eating your soft plastics, plastics. when fishing on the bottom like flounder? Use Z-Man. Yeah, Got to use the Z-Man. Yep. Why don't you guys use hat cams as salty strikes? Have you tried? Yeah, we use them sometimes, but a we don't like cam? to use them a lot because you're moving your head around and it doesn't really look good. I don't think y'all really like that. Semper fishing. Do you prefer kayak fishing or boat? Well, if I could catch the same fish from a kayak, I would catch it from a kayak. Um, so typically for Christy and I, we do more, we do more, um, Thanks, sorry, I the light's really bright. That's right. We do like, more boat fishing. Right behind my head. <laughs> um, if we had a kayak, we, we do a lot of that too. So I don't know, maybe a toss up kayak or boat fishing. I love kayak fishing, by the way. Do you double uni your leader or swivel? We double uni our leader to the braid. It's easy. Uh -huh. I know it's not the best. A lot of people use the FG. Yeah. If you guys have like a small, um, what's it called? Eye hooks, right? Mm -hmm. If you guys have yes. small eye hooks, like on um, the favorite rods. Oh yeah, yeah. Then your that, um the W unit gets stuck in the top one. Yeah. So you just the FG would probably be better. Jake Burns, I like to use top waters. What colors do you recommend? I love it's a um it's what? a, it's a, a uh, skitter walk and it's like yellow on top with a black bottom. Or it might be the other way around. I'm really sorry, but it's yellow and gold, and that's my favorite color. I love I mean I'm sorry, it's orange. It is gold and black. And I like the black because on the bottom the silhouette of a fish when they're looking up at it. It's it's deadly. So that's 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 deadly. my favorite. For Topwater, how long have you guys been married? Asked Dean Nelson. Two, Two years. and a half years. Boom. Boom, baby. Uh, <clears throat> do you guys ever get to St. Mary's, Georgia? Uh, we just left there two weeks ago. And please hit send us an email. And we would love to go fishing with you. 
So um, yes, yeah, send us an email. Sean Yegley, our, our buddy out there, charter captain yeah. is awesome. If you guys are looking for one, tight, tight line charters, right? Mm -hmm. Sean Yegley with tight line charters out in Georgia. Okay. I get a so lot Diana, of questions. Uh, Where are y'all from originally? I'm from. Where do you guys think I'm from originally? The country, and I like it that way. Jeff is a country boy. I grew up right outside of New York City in Long Island. Yes. Thankfully, I don't have an accent. But North Florida bass and what yep. lures do you use in terms of surf fishing? We like to use soft plastics. Ain't nothing like catching trout and redfish in the surf with soft plastics. Same thing like you're doing in the inlets, bouncing it off the bottom or swimming it. You know, trout fishing <clears> is <throat> awesome. Trout fishing is about to heat up you guys on the surf. On the yeah. whole coast with the mullet run. A lot of you guys ask where to cast you when you're surf fishing. So usually there's like a break. You want to cast past the break. But like we were just in the Outer Banks like a month or two ago. And the fish were like straight up in the surf. So really sometimes it just depends. But I usually cast past the waves and then bring it to me. Yes. All right. Spanish mackerel have been biting like crazy. Yes, they have. You guys can fill a cooler up with Spanish right now. Do you guys Do plan these special trout in late September? Yep. KT, we are going to be there for like three weeks in the mm -hmm. Outer Banks mm -hmm. in yep. September. Yep. We will be there like a long time. Um, best charter, Matt J. Fineo by far. Fineo is a great charter. Austin, I uh, actually just talked to him this morning at Ocean's East, and he is a great charter. Um, What's up with the foam cooler? Cobia Killer. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Cobia that's Killer right. is is a great charter as well. Carolina um, Sunrise Charters yeah, Carolina is Cobia Kill Killer. Same yeah. guy. We fish with him all the time, and he's he's <clears throat> awesome. We just upgraded to a Yeti, by the way. Will W, have you ever fished in other countries? Negative. But nope. we would love to. Yeah, I actually, we just got invited to go to um, Saudi Arabia to fish a tournament. So I'm not sure we're going to make it to Saudi. But Juan Garcia, cool. do you spearfish? Funny you would ask because I'm actually in the process of getting my spear fishing set up. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Do you guys ever want to come over to go to One Life? Mm -hmm. uh, do you plan on having a baby fisherman or woman? Eventually, yeah. Oh, that's cute. Do you plan on having a baby fisherman? Or yeah, a bunch. Um, what? Okay, for all y'all out there who have kids. We're going to ask you guys in the next year or two. We need tips on how the heck you guys bring newborns out on the boat because that's got to happen. That's right. Probably a T-top with some shade. Um, but anyways, you guys, we're getting close to Jeff, are you on minutes. the Geico commercial? <laughs> looks like you. That's Babe, great. are you on the Geico commercial? I don't know about uh, <laughs> What's your email? It's on our um, – if you go to our like about page on our YouTube channel – I think it's you click on like for business inquiries and it's one fish two fish TV at gmail.com. So hit us up um, if you guys want to go fishing. What's your email and to schedule going out fishing with you guys? Yeah. That you just said that? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But okay, you guys. Anyways, um, this, what, the sun's gone down. It's dark. And, <laughs> it is gone. Um, I got some videos to Shade edit. Shade SPF 1000. Thank you. Yeah, I'm definitely going to need that. Um, so anyways, you guys, we we keep these, we'll keep them at about 30 minutes and hopefully we get to all y'all's questions and just hang out with you guys. Enjoy the sunset behind us. Um, and I don't know, maybe we'll do this more frequently. Um, we've been getting some people asking for it and we feel like this is a cool way just to hang out with y'all and engage with you guys. Yeah. Let us know what else you guys want to be seeing. Um, we just did a tournament, our first one. So if that's cool for you guys to see. We're definitely up for doing that. Um, if you guys want to see more of these live things, we love these too. Cause then we get to like interact with y'all and you guys are, this feels more real cause they're your comments. So this out. is fun for us. Last thing, um, if anybody wants to go fishing or invite us to go fish, hit us up on our email, onefish2fishtv at gmail.com, and we would love to, um, you know, holler at y'all. Maybe go fishing. That's Do something like that. right, you guys. Anyways, that's it, you guys. We're going to get up out of here. Y'all have a good night, and stay tuned because we got a lot of vids coming at y'all. Yep. Do some blue crabbing. Peace out. All right. Thanks, you guys, for your comments. See y'all later. Peace out.